Hi everybody, it's Christopher Yoke with Yoke Pen Company again. Today I'm going to show you how to do one of the most asked questions I get and that is how you make these little flanges on the oblique pen holder. To start off with you're going to need some, some uh, metal shears they're better if they are straight with no sawtooth edges like this. They're how they're smooth. There's no uh, serrated edges. Um, you're also going to need a pair of needle nose pliers. And these are bale making pliers. Um, this is the most important part. You get these in any jewelry uh, making store or online. Um, you can also get them in most like Hobby Lobbies, um, craft stores, things like that. Um, this size is the three millimeter and which is the smaller side and I believe this bigger one is six millimeter. It's either five or six but regardless you don't need this one. This three millimeter one is the one that's important. Um, what you do is you also need to get some of this brass. This is 10 one thousandths, which is 0 .010 brass. Um, you can also pick this up in most hardware stores in little small sheets of it. Um, I believe it's made by K&S Metals, is who the uh, you know who it's uh, the manufacturer for most stores. I get mine from a sheet metal place, but you can get it anywhere. Um, if you're going to a sheet metal place, you want a 260 alloy brass. Um, which means it's very flexible um, which is important so the way I begin is I cut these into four inch as you can see long and they are one half inch wide um, then after that I cut it in half so I'm actually getting a one a half inch by two inch so I'm gonna cut it in half right now okay I got extra one just in case I need it. Okay, so now we got four of them. Um, simply, all you do, grab it and fold it over lengthwise. And you want to line these ends up. And once you do that, you're going to squeeze down a little bit. So it's going to be like that. Then you're going to take these bale making pliers because they're smooth. I have another pair of pliers for this, but it's a, you can just use these and you want to crimp it down so that that folds a little tighter as you can see let's see if I can get it right you can see a little bit of a air gap in there you want that because you don't want it squeezed super super tight once that's squeezed down flat like that it's really really simple you just grab the end so they're in the end of the bale making pliers with the three millimeter side down and you're going to make sure it's pretty straight at a right angle with the pliers, let me move some of this stuff out of the way so you can see. And you're going to and you're going to fold it around. So you just grab it and you push it around. And what you're going to end up with is a shape like that. Um, that's the start of it. The next thing you're going to want to do because you're probably a de uh, do-it-yourselfer and you want this for a specific nib, you want to just open it up a little bit. Then you grab your nib and you're going to put it inside of the thing see like that and then you can squeeze her down and then take your straight pliers and you want to leave a little bit of a gap in case you ever want to change for a different nib um, as you can see right there and then all you're going to do is take this piece, this side and you're going to push it up so I'll try and do this so you can watch it happen. Push it up like that. Once it's done, you should have that shape right there. And as you can see, that's pretty much close for that nib exactly. Um, and you should end up, without the nib in it, having something similar to that. Um, and then once it's done, of course, you can take it and cut it at whatever angle you need to to make it fit inside the slot of your pin holder um, 
or whatever. You're going to cut any excess off you need in order to bring this in so that once it's set inside the pin that that nib is pointing to the axis of the pin holder. So that's the length. So you just take small cuts and move slightly over and over and over until you get it where you need it. Um, that's the best way for a beginner to do it. Once you've done it a bunch of times, you pretty much have a good idea where it goes to if you're cutting your slots all the same in the pins. Um, if you have a um, Zanarian style flange, um, which will slide into it, basically what you're going to want to do is you're going to, let me do this in, real quick, I'm going to make another one so you can watch it, how quick it goes once you've done this a few times. See, if you're not using it, you just open it up a little bit so you still have a little bit of a gap there. Hold on to it, fold it over, there it is. And what's going to happen is, like on another one, you may have the flange when you pull it out of one like this. And what you're going to want to do is lay that on top of your current flange after you bend it and mark where you want it and cut it just at the same angle as that one which I didn't make a very good line because I got ten of them on here and the last thing it's going to need is little itty bitty ears on this edge here so you grab this and hold just a little bit of it and bend these out and what that does is that will allow for the shim which is a toothpick typically grab a toothpick once it's inserted into the pin, it another angle. You slide it in here, and what it's doing is forcing those that tight inside of that hole. So same concept. You just bend little ears on it, basically. That's all. And that should be the end of it. And once you have them, if you want to do them like I do, just keep me a jar full of them. I sit down and bend like 50 at a time. Um, if you have any questions on this, you can always email me at yokepin, yokepin at gmail.com. And again, this is a 3 millimeter baling plier. So it makes little bales for jewelry. Thanks.